Hello again, it's Lock Noob and Sparrows have sent me um, a whole bunch of kit that they have just released uh, so I can do a review on it, which is very kind of them. Thank you, Sparrows. Um, it's uh, worth mentioning a few things that um, whilst they did send me this kit, I don't get paid to say stuff or views on my own. Um, I don't get money off any sales of Sparrows equipment, um, but I have worked with Sparrows in the past on a number of different designs, so that is definitely worth mentioning too. So do with that information as you will. Um, Anyway, um, where to start, where to start? Let's start with the, um, I don't want to say small rides, it's like they're not significant, but I think I should spend more time on this one because it's uh, it's a bit more complicated. Right, so first up is this, it's very visually appealing. This is a Japanese style uh, tiger patch and um, you can see it's got this, uh, all these hooks on here as well so it can just stick to um, wherever you stick your patches on, um, your bags, uh, whatever else you have, but it's, also split at the back so you could actually put something in there like the stash like one of these pry bars uh, small pick set some money handcuff keys whatever um, you want to stash behind one of these stickers so stickers patches you know what I'm talking about so if you think this is kind of cool and you like Japanese style uh, tigers then this may well be for you moving swiftly on we have some heavy bars uh, so there are a few people doing heavy bars at the moment um, and these are the Sparrows version. If I can find, um, yeah, I've got a bunch of their uh, standard sizes, say, you know, the 0.81 or 1.2 mil, uh, millimeter uh, pry bars. Uh, and you'll see that they've done the heavy bars in the same style. These heavy bars are um, 0 0.079 inches, um, 79 thousandths of an inch or two millimeters thick, they are thick. Let's compare it to um, one of the thinner ones and you can see just how much thicker they are. Um, they are big, just look at the th thickness difference there. Um, so they are heavy, why would you have those? Well, in a lot of locks, I've got a, a little um, practice lock here, they would just be too thick, you know, you don't need anything like that. A 1.2 millimeter version would fit in just fine. Um, and yeah, you just, you wouldn't need such a thick pry bar for a lot of locks. But some locks, well, some locks, you just need to have something which is a little beefier. Take this um, uh, Cabot 8, and you can see that this 1.2 millimeter, I think it is, pry bar, just flops around in here. You don't get a lot of control if you had to uh, rotate it back um, to counter rotate any of the pins if they uh, are spools and they drop into a full set. But check out a, what a two millimeter bar does. Look at that. It's beautifully fitting in there, really nice, and that will give you a lot of control. There are many other locks of this type. I know the Bannum um, M2002 and a whole bunch of other uh, uh, covers and yeah, so many other locks that just need a thicker, heavier bar. Lots of dimple locks as well with those wide open keyways. Um, especially for me, because I like to put a lot of uh, torque on dimple locks. Then yeah, these um, super heavy bars, the, I think they call this, was it Sparrows? Heavy, heavy bars um, can be very, very useful. These are on the website. And again, prices may change with, uh, you know, currency, the time, and date that you watch this video, all that kind of stuff, but they're on the website at the moment at uh, six US dollars and 95 cents. I didn't say, but the patch was uh, nine US dollars. Right, moving on again, what is this? Oh, it's not really a surprise, but I'll reveal it now because it poked through. It wasn't very aesthetically appealing on the camera just then, so I put it under there. But these are steel springs, uh, and they are a little bit harder to compress than their brass equivalents. So that's cool. What do they go with? They go with these cores. You might have seen this uh, practice lock um, earlier. This is a five pin one with, I have to say, some pretty good bitting. And um, this is one of the Sparrows practice locks. Um, got to align the key to the right place. You can tell by the little symbol at the front. But this is the SC1 keyway. Okay, that's great. And you do a lot of practicing there. But as any experienced lock picker will tell you, the keyway itself in a lock um, can make a huge difference to how easy or not it is to pick. Some keyways are incredibly um, tricky to, to navigate. This tin has 
Um, so that's the SC1. This has the other top three, well, four including that one, uh, North American keyways, the Y1, the KW1, and the WR5. So what you can do is you can swap these out. So let me just show you. Um, it takes a little bit of effort and you need to make sure that you um, align the top of the key with uh, the way you pull it out so you don't end up dropping the pins. But if you do pull that out, you'll see that you have, it's already pinned up to the key. If I just hold here and just try to remove, oh, I can't do that because um, the pins are in the way. Gently remove that, you'll see that you have uh, a key there, all the pins to that key, but look, the keyway is different. Let me just pop this here, pop it down there. I'll show you. So look, we've got a different style keyway. That will require a little bit more skill to navigate. So that is the, um, just to be gentle with that one, putting it back in, that is the Y1. Then you've got the KW1. These are not quite as um, complicated as the Yale one. And it does take a little bit of a pulling. You can twist it a little bit to free it up and then pull it out. There we go. It is a bit tight, I have to say. But there you go, that's a KW one. I gently pull that out. You can see that this one is again different. It will offer a different challenge. Can you see that? So there's the SE1 against the KW1 there. And I'll just show you the last one. And all of these will give you different sort of navigational challenges. They seem to be um, bitted differently as well. The keys, which is cool. So again, you get a double challenge there. This is the WR5. Let's see if that one's a stiff one to get out. Um, I found that giving them a little twist back and forth, it does help. And that's the WR5. Gently pull this out so I don't lose all the pins that all one almost escaped. There we go. Gentle, gentle, gentle. I wouldn't recommend you do this until you've actually put it in the lock, but uh, there you go. And this one, again, very different. So just compare the, just an SC1 to that. Um, it's almost like a different handedness in the way the warding works in that lock. So um, yeah, this has been an idea which has sort of been around and floated around a few times. I've had people saying, oh, you know, it's a shame that, um, you know, uh, sparrows don't offer different keyways in their uh, practice locks. And, and this is an example of where, um, yeah, I don't know when they started having this idea uh, and implementing it themselves. Um, but nevertheless, they have, and it's really, really cool. Oh, I've lost a, a pin there. Jumps out, if you, out at you if you're not careful. The steel springs, again, so you've got uh, different bittings, you've got um, different keyways to go into your practice locks. So you get a whole range of different uh, uh, challenges there. So different bittings, different keyways, but you can also swap the brass springs out for um, one or more of these steel springs. And again, they'll give uh, a greater resistance to um, uh, the, the the pick. So have a, a sort of a, a different feel to the way you pick it as well. So this uh, box is called the Practice Lock Core Trainer is uh, 24 US dollars and 95 cents at the time of filming. So that was quite a brisk review so far, but what I'd like to do is just give um, some of this a go, actually. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I'll probably try to pick this quite challenging uh, bitting on the SC1, and then I'll swap over to what's the most different, probably the Y1 uh, keyway, and just have a go at picking the, the two things, and I'll show how to swap the um, uh, core out so you can do that. Uh, if you haven't already got um, this, then another option, and they didn't send this um, with this, it's just worth mentioning that there is like a, the, the Sparrows Reload Kit in a very similar style, which has this um, uh, follow in, you can buy them separately, you can buy them uh, for different places as well, but it's worth mentioning that it's in the same style as this, if you like sets all together. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have a go at just swapping the cores out and having a bit of a pick. So we're in the vice and this number five on the front, actually in this particular lock, signifies it's pinned to five pins. It's a five pin key. Worth pointing that out because you have um, six pin cores in here and this is um, uh, made as a six pin lock, but pinned to five. So you could put an extra pin in here from um, your own collection or the Sparrows Reload Kit. 
But if you do do that, don't forget to put your spring and your driver pin in the sixth position in the Bible here as well, otherwise you'll be in trouble. Um, I won't have that problem, so I'm not going to pin either of these six pins for the sake of this video. So there is that pretty awesome bitting. Put that in the lock, um, nice and smooth. We've got a pry bar, I think that's 1.2 millimeter, and a Sparrows Lunatic. So um, moderate tension, let's have a, a feel through it. Oh, just click something. Might have been one of the lower set pins and automatically on pin five. Uh, I felt some movement there. Nothing on four at all, nothing on three, uh, two. Oh, and we are open. So despite the bitting, if you've got a pick with a good reach, you can uh, not worry so much about these uh, low set pins in position one and four on a bitting like this. So now we've picked this and we want to swap out the core. Uh, we'll need to take it apart. You could use um, a tip of a pick like this um, and then your fingers to, well, you push this pin down and you use your fingers to rotate this out. If you have um, one of these specially shaped uh, followers, then what you can do is you can just, um, it sort of presses down that pin at the same time. You can sort of unscrew the back of these. There we go. Drop that down, dump those pins. Helps you have a tray or a bit of creased cardboard, doesn't really matter. Um, and then you can really just pop, pop your key in, turn it so that uh, the top is just to the side so that the pins aren't going to be aligned with uh, uh, any of the holes in, in the lock here. And then use a follower which goes straight down and get that into position and just gently push it straight through and out. Now you don't need to remove the follower to change the core. You'll see, like we said, five pins. Let's swap that out for, move that over here. Actually, I'll put it there, can't I? So as a reference, or here, let's put it there. You can say something like this, uh, Y1 keyway, and just do the opposite. So literally just um, pop it in like this, at the same sort of angle. Actually, you could say it's aligned with this groove here. Push it in, keeping some pressure on the follower turn it around to that position and then you'll need to just, uh, I've got some pinning tweezers here, just pop the spring, the pin in like that and this ring and just do the same thing in reverse really, which is to get one of these followers or uh, depress it with a, some tweezers or tip of your pick or whatever it is and tighten it. Now what you don't want to do is over tighten it. You want to make sure that this actually rotates freely with the key um, with no resistance, which this does. And then you can gently pull out the key like this and put it back in. If it works nice and smoothly, then it should pick nice and smoothly. And you'll see that we have changed this to the Y1 uh, keyway. The bitting isn't quite as extreme, um, but, but I'll be using a different pick in this anyway. So so that's, that's where we are. Let's uh, throw this in a vice and have a go at picking this. I can still use a 1.2 mil pro bar with a thin tip just at the top like this. And I'm going to use a short hook on this lock because um, in this I can't pick from the bottom. Oh, I'm going to pick from the side warding here. That's pin four, three, two, one, I can feel. There, uh, out oh, touch five and we are open. Now that was just a lot easier bitting but uh, I did have to consider the keyway when I was picking it. Uh, and I could go through and keep swapping out those keyways. Um, once I got used to the keyways, I could pin them to six. If I wasn't so comfortable with pinning them to six, I could use, um, I could pin this lock to two, three pins. I could swap the keyways, swap the driver pins to high security pins. There's an awful lot of fun you could probably have just by mixing up your cores, a number, number and types of pins um, and the, the bittings of the, um, the, the different keys. So yeah, I mean, you could really have quite a lot of fun with this set. This set, the um, Practice Lock Core Trainer, is again at the time of um, this review, $24.95. So conclusions, um, where to start? Let's start with the patch. Um, it's cool, I like it, uh, Japanese style tiger. Uh, it, sort of appeals to me, might not appeal to you. I think that's the crux of this, isn't it? If you um, want a nice big patch that has a Japanese tiger on it, 
then this might be the one for you. If you don't like that sort of thing and have no need for it, it might not be for you. Um, all these things that are largely aesthetic, they are just a matter of personal taste, so not much I can really say about it. The uh, heavy bars, yeah, they're not gonna be useful in every uh, lock, um, and you might use them the least out of your set of um, pry bars, but as I showed you earlier, when you have one of those wide open keyways or a big dimple lock and you just need to put some extra tension on, you need to fill that keyway to get better um, control, especially for those false sets, you just can't beat a heavy bar, these two millimeter pry bars. And what's nice is they are actually matched to the design of the um, other Sparrows pry bars uh, that they sell. So that's really good as well. You know, if you like things to match, like I do. And then we've got those practice lock cores. Just a cool idea, really. Um, I like the fact they're compatible with a lot of the other Sparrows range. So they're practice locks and um, uh, the revolver, I think, as well, I said. Uh, but also, you know, any compatible kick cylinder that will work, and you might have to try that out first. Not all of them are, but, you know, they, they could be used in um, um, other locks as well. It's nice to be able to swap the uh, the keyways around and have the extra challenge. I really like that. If you do have the reload kit, clearly the keys only work in the SE1 keyway, but um, the uh, pins that you get with the set uh, can be used um you know, in any practice lock you have, and uh, you can change the uh, bittings of the uh, locks, although you won't be able to use the same key in them um, as well, just by changing around the, the key pins. Uh, I, it's just a really cool idea. I really like it. Um, and yeah, it, it's in a nice little compact set as well. So if you had a practice lock and some of these cores, um, you know, I think you get a lot of a ver uh, variety, a lot of variation um, with them and without having to invest in multiple locks. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess this depends on what your use case is. It's clearly aimed at beginners. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, and it's a really nice addition to that kind of practice set that Sparrows have, I think. Sorry to interrupt my flow. I was just tidying up after the video and I forgot to mention just one thing, uh, which is an observation worth mentioning. Um, which is just by handling all these cores, I did end up with quite grubby fingers. Um, I, I think it's probably some graphite um, lubricant, but it also could be some of this sort of um, uh, aging finish on here. It doesn't impact on the way the lock works, they're very smooth, uh, but it does make your fingers a bit grubby. I'd probably want to just uh, run a, a dry cloth over these um, uh, if I was going to handle them or at least wash my hands afterwards. Uh, for the first few times I use them. Uh, so yeah, just what I thought I'd mention that. I don't see it as a, a necessary a, a downside, but um, yeah, you can see on my fingers that it does leave a small residue. Anyway, um, I'd like to know what you think. Uh, what do you think to the patch? What do you think to these heavy bars? Uh, do, you, do you reckon that these um, different keyways are um, a good investment or a, um, a, a fun addition to the Sparrows range. I know that they work in the um, revolver as well. Let me know your thoughts. I'd be really interested to know. Um, if you like this video, then please just leave a like. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out. Leave a comment below, as I said. I do actually read all of them, um, reply to as many as I can, and, uh, if, and of course, yeah, I'll see you all next time.